Now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for the evening, Jessica, Bo Jessica Baral, who I just met. It's terrific. She's a junior at Washington University in St. Louis studying biology and computer science under the Florence Moog Research Fellowship and the University Scholars Program in Medicine. Jessica has completed the trifecta, competing in all three of the society's competitions. In middle school, she entered the first science fair, her first science fair with a device to strengthen eye muscles and increase peripheral vision. I could have used one of those. For this project, she was selected as a finalist for the 2012 Broadcom Masters and won the Marconi Samueli Award for Innovation. In high school, she received grand prize awards at the International Science and Engineering Fair in 2016 and 2017, and was a finalist in the 2017 Regeneron Science Talent Search for her patent-pending diagnostic tool for small cell lung cancer. I'm just thinking I should get to know her now so that when it's time for me to in interview her for NPR, we'll have that good connection. <laughs> Jessica is also a co-inventor of Tissue States, a tissue deconvolution tool used to analyze disease signatures on a genomic level. And, you know, when she's not busy changing the world in biology, she has, she has other pursuits. She's passionate about dance and started a nonprofit called Our Chance to Dance. Please welcome Jessica Barral. Thank you so much for that introduction, and thank you Broadcom Masters for having me here today. I am so honored and humbled to be speaking with all of you. And to my Broadcom Masters, did you guys have a fun time this past week? Yeah? Science can be pretty fun, and the Masters program shows you really how fun it can be. Every time I'm at a Society for the Science and the Public related event, I honestly, truly feel like I'm coming home. And seeing you guys out here, I know that our future is so bright because I know I'm looking at engineers, inventors, innovators. Realize that I didn't say future engineers, inventors. These, these are our people right now. This is you right now. Seven years ago, I was sitting right in those seats. <laughs> Slightly nervous, barely tall enough to see the stage fully. So I think it might be appropriate for me to tell you about my first science fair. In short, I was really upset that I had vision problems. I had friends who watched more TV than me, people who read under the sheets with minimal lighting, real criminal activity, let me tell you. And here I was donning those gorgeous black metal frames on my face. And middle school me was not about to accept my fate. Eye vision and eye health was something I cared about deeply because it affected every single person in my family. And I wanted to do something about it. So why not use science to do that? So I did. Growing up, I had seen my dad tape those eye vision charts to every single corner in our home so as to never lose an opportunity to carry out a quick eye check. And he would sit on the sofa staring at his thumbs and exercising his eyes and to me, a middle school kid, I knew the importance of exercising your muscles, but I was not about to sit there and stare at my thumbs. I grew up in the Silicon Valley. I loved technology. So I wondered, wasn't there a better way to do this? So I spent the next few months toiling away in my backyard shed, playing with microcontrollers and breadboards, and eventually, I created a device that would allow you to follow lights with your eyes in any configuration, at any rate, in any pattern you wanted. And that was a fun way for people my age to exercise their eye muscles. I saw that it strengthened people's eye muscles and enhanced their peripheral vision. And later that year, my friend told me about a county science fair that had just opened up, so I applied on a whim, and I eventually found myself here at the 2012 Broadcom Masters. Later that year, I found myself at the White House Science Fair, and let me tell you, being able to explain my passion for science and show my device to Bill Nye the science guy was one of the biggest highlights in my life. And all of this was because of my passion for science. Broadcom Masters showed me that science is not a consumption of textbook knowledge. It's a contribution to a pool of knowledge. 
It showed me that there's a community of people out there who want me to be doing science. And most important of all, it showed me that science transcends race, gender, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status. So over the years, I went on to compete in more and more science fairs and eventually competed at ISAF and the Regeneron Science Talent Search. And with every fair I attended, my circles enlarged, and I met more and more Broadcom Masters alumni. So I want to tell you a little bit about my journey so far and what I've learned along the way. First, you guys are not here because you believe that you are too young to make a difference. No, you are not here because you think that you don't have what it takes to change this world. You are here because whether you failed on your first try, or your second try, or your hundredth try, you had a lot of fun doing good science along the way. And it's true that we've come such a long way in science, but it's also equally true that we have such an exciting journey ahead of us. And you guys, right here, get to shape that journey with your beautiful, fascinating projects and your ambitions and your passions for science. So don't let anyone, not even yourselves, define your boundaries too soon and learn to say yes. Find a mentor. Find anyone willing to invest in you because research can get hard sometimes. You know this, I know this, and eventually you might reach a point where you feel like, I don't really know how to tackle that problem. I, I don't know if I can do this. And your mentor will be there for you to support you. So talk to the society's alumni, talk to CEOs of companies you care about, and PhD scientists doing research you love, and ask them for anything. Assistance, funding, training, bother them all you can. Experiment early and experiment often. Learn from your mistakes in one project and carry what you learn to your next one. Because you will start to find problems that you care about in this world, and science will be your means towards that end goal. And it'll be the way that you find the solutions you want. From what I've gathered so far, there are two kinds of rules in science. Those that you should absolutely follow, and those that maybe you should find a way around. And to all the parents in the room, I never said that. In eighth grade, I had a project where I wanted to see if we could rapidly cleanse the bottoms of our shoes such that we could wear them inside our homes without worrying that the bacteria would spread everywhere. And in order to do that, I had to hold test trials and grow bacteria. My mom was not too fond of the idea of growing E. coli in our fridge. So, so no E. coli in the fridge. OK, fine. My dad and I had built a backyard shed that housed all of my scientific gadgets and equipment. And so we got a fridge, and we put it in there, and we said, we put up a sign that said, no food allowed. And that's where I hosted my new prokaryotic friends. And I continued in my endeavors of science. Science has always had my back, regardless of what stage of life I've been in. And if you leave today with anything, I want it to be this. There's always a way to continue doing the science you want to do, and there's always a space for doing science in anything you do. Later that year, I lost my friend to cancer, and that was the first time I understood what grief really was. Amidst my coping, I did not want to know what had happened to her. I wanted to know why it had happened. I wanted to carry out cancer research. So I furiously devoured those PubMed articles that you and I are so familiar with. And I emailed a bunch of professors explaining my ideas. The rule stated that I needed to be 16 to carry out cancer research, and I was 14. But I did not want to wait two years to get answers. So I told all these professors my ideas and my ambition. And eventually, I found one professor who not only accepted me into his cancer research lab, but also did everything necessary to overcome the age restrictions. Speaking of restrictions, to all the females in this room right now, I want you to know that there is a space for you in science. As a female in STEM myself, I want you to know that there is a need for you in science. Because the world will not progress if half the population is not present at that table of CEOs and innovators and inventors. And ladies, you might find that there are tables that maybe just don't want you. 
And that's okay, don't shy away. Make your own table and invite others to it. Find ways to get your ideas heard. Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson were three women integral to getting us to space. Marie Curie was a two-time Nobel laureate. And these women carried out science experiments in a time no one really wanted them to. So to everyone in the room right now, all my finalists, you are not the future. You are the now. Broadcom Masters is just the first step to an amazing, amazing journey, let me tell you. It opened the doors for you to continue in your path of discovery. Personally, science fairs gave me three amazing things. The ability to recognize problems in my community that I cared about. The confidence that I could tackle them despite my age and the community that I needed to do so. Science fairs gave me the people that I cherished most in my life. So I urge you, look to your left and look to your right, because these are your co-founders, your classmates, your co-inventors. This right here is the best support system that the world has to offer. Because no matter how badly your next invention might fail on its first prototype, these are the people who will remind you that you are doing science to improve the world at large. These are the people who will remind you that you will publish in those top journals and you will get those patents. So start telling people what your ideas are and start telling them how you want to tackle them and take up space unapologetically. Science has leaked itself into every aspect of my life and for that I am incredibly grateful. Outside of science, I'm a dance activist. I am a classically trained dancer, and I research how dance actually imparts joy and how it affects those with mental health conditions. And using that work, I encourage others to move with me. I'm currently working with people from around the world to organize a movement in mental health day. So the biggest piece of advice I have for you today is only three words long. Do not wait. Do not wait for someone to magically come through the doors and tell you how you can solve your next problems and how you can get the next mentors you need and how you can achieve anything you want in life. Do, do not wait. Just do it right now, today, when you get home. You can develop the next innovative applications to detecting stages of rare cancers, and you can save millions of gallons of water and find new ways to clean that water. I've seen it already in the projects that you guys presented. You don't have to have a PhD to be an inventor. Just start with the science that you know and leap from there and keep jumping. As I wrote in a Society for the Science and Public article, I wrote when I was not too much, longer, too much older than you are today, science is the most powerful way to change communities and the world. So I want to end by asking you guys, which problems do you want to solve the next? Think about it. Good luck and welcome home. Thank you.